Uh, sorry, and I'm over here. Okay. Um, so I'm uh, going to talk just generally about research software sustainability in the context of two different activities. Uh, one being the Wispy set of workshops that some people have been to, and the other being a new project called Hersey, which I'll talk about. Um, and let's see. So first, uh, I will just throw out a definition of research. Uh, software sustainability. I think part of this came from Neil at one point, part of it came from a bunch of other people, and I don't actually know who all of it came from, so it doesn't have any uh, attribution. But uh, but the definition that I think is actually a good one and, um, and is worth uh, either sticking with or getting fee uh, feedback on and, and fixing and improving is that uh, sustainable software has the capability to endure so that it continues to be available in the future on new platforms meeting new needs. Um, and and if that's the case, then we can think of the research software lifecycle as, as uh, assembling and uh, sorry, acquiring and assembling the resources uh, needed to, to build software and to maintain software and building them into teams and communities, uh, actually doing the software development, in some sense then using the software, uh, recognizing the contributions to the software and the contributions of the software into the larger uh, research activity, and then maintaining the software. And I think if we can we can do all these things, then we end up with reasonably sustainable software. So, um, so I, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago, while sitting on an airplane, I was trying to think about how all these things fit together, and I drew this little funny picture, um, which isn't great because it's using PowerPoint to do drawing, and there's probably a better way to do this, and hopefully one day this will get improved. Um, but it's I think it's worth kind of thinking about this because this is, uh, for me at least, it's a starting point for how all these different pieces fit together. Um, and I'm talking with uh, Carolyn and, and Rob, um, who probably would change this slightly, and so this may change slightly. If other people want to change it as well, I'm certainly happy to, to think about how that could happen and to, to do that. But, but basically, my, uh, my version of this is that, um, is that we have, at the core, we have two things. We have basically people and software. Um, and this is the really the main things. And all of these other things are somewhat peripheral to them. Um, <coughs> and, well, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if it makes sense to go through actually this in great detail. Oh, okay. So, um, so funding organizations have a role in this in terms of recognizing and rewarding people. Uh, hiring organizations actually hire the people and get the funding in most cases. Um, we have software engineering processes that are really overlapping software, which in some sense are, are being formalized by hiring organizations, they're being developed by people, um, they're being used by communities. Uh, communities have a role in terms of, of standardizing activities as well as recognizing and rewarding people. Uh, publishers, repositories, indices have a role in, in the software world as well. Um, and then there's the kind of the hardware and the underlying software, which at least in my model is just being used, but there probably should be another arrow that goes back up a little bit because it, it's probably providing some requirements on the software as well. Um, so, oh, right, and then the last little piece is that we've got this kind of education and, and training loop that's going on here that's fairly important because the I mean, people don't just learn how to do this by themselves, but there has to be some formal process. So whether or not this is right isn't exactly the point, but it's a way of thinking about this. And, and once we have this way of thinking about it, then we can try to use it for other things. So, um, so just to start off with the WISPI, was originally the workshop on sustained, uh, sustainable software for science, practice, and experience. Um, it's kind of changed now to be working towards rather than workshop on because we had more than one workshop, so we had to keep the acronym but uh, change the meaning. Um, and probably we should have said research instead of science, um, but I like the triple S and I like the alliteration, so, so we put science. Um, WISPI is an international community driven organization that promotes the sustainability of research software by addressing the challenges related to the full life cycle of, of software through shared learning and community actions. We envision a world where research software is accessible, robust, sustained, and recognized as a scholarly research product, critical to the advancement of knowledge, learning, and discovery. And we do this by working in four different areas in terms of uh, in principles and best practices, in careers, in learning, and in credit. And if you're interested, there's more things that you can get to. There's a, a website that, uh, as you can tell from the, the end of the name, Neil helped us with uh, originally, and is probably paying for the hosting of or something like that. Uh, we have a mailing list, a Slack channel, a Twitter channel, a Facebook, Twitter account, a Facebook account, all these things. Um, and a bunch of different meetings and activities. And we've had up to this point, I believe, eight workshops over five years. 
Uh, we'll have a ninth workshop with the e-science conference that will be in Amsterdam in September or October, and we may have a tenth that will be uh, somewhere around the same time, but in the U.S. and potentially a little bit longer. Um, so in, in WISPI 4, which was the uh, sixth <laughs> meeting, I believe, sorry, the numbers get to be a little bit confusing, um, we had a bunch of different working groups, and these were kind of assembled in some way in an unconference model, kind of like the hackathon activities or like the speed blog activities. Um, and so the, the 12 different things that came together are listed here. I don't really want to go through all of them at this point. Um, you can certainly look at these slides. I just posted them on the Slack channel and tweeted about them, so they should be available for anybody that wants to grab them. Um, but I did kind of take these working groups and then try to map them onto the figure that I had previously. And that gave me this lovely figure. <laughs> Uh, if this was a longer talk, I would animate this, and only one would pop up at a time, and it would be more sensible. But the thing that is worth thinking at at this point is that there's nothing here that's not being covered by one of these working groups, and this was not the intent. Right? We didn't have working groups that said, can we cover the entire space? But each working group formed independently to do what it thought was the right thing that was interesting to them. And in the process of doing that, I think we actually did have discussions about almost everything that was important, even if not in all, in all the details that could be important. Um, Right, so, so again, uh, feel free to, to look at this, make comments, give me feedback, um, tell me things that we've missed, that would be interesting. In WSP 5.1, we did a speed blogging activity, and we ended up with these uh, eight speed blogs that were published by the, on the SSI blog for in about two weeks. Um, so if you were reading the blog, you'd see lots of stuff coming out fairly quickly, and, and these are the things that you would have seen. This, uh, I thought kind of this was borrowed from the collaborations workshop last year as a great practice. Um, again, I don't want to talk quite uh, about all of them, but I do want to just kind of say that if we do the same kind of thing, we can see, uh, again, that we've covered <coughs> most of the space, but we didn't quite cover all the space, in my opinion. Um, right? We didn't really talk about funding organizations, we didn't really talk about hardware and underlying software, but it was, a, in some ways, it was a much shorter meeting and much more focused, and I think we just had a smaller, slightly smaller group of people. So that was what came out. So, okay, so that's, that's WISPI. Um, again, just to summarize, uh, community activity, people come together, they meet, they do things that they want. It's kind of like a collaborations workshop, less hackathon, uh, a little bit more presentations, um, although I guess I shouldn't say that since I'm presenting now. But, um, but it's intended to be a community organization, and it's very driven by the community. So um, I think I was the lead organizer for the first maybe five or six of them. Uh, Stefan who's here somewhere, ah, oh, thank you, yes, down there, uh, was, uh, ran the, the, last, uh, the last one, uh, and then we have a different person that's kind of come in that's gonna be running the next one. So there's opportunities, if you, if you see something in the space that's interesting to you and you wanna get involved, uh, please let us know, and there's plenty of opportunity to do things. Okay, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about then is, is URSI. And so, uh, basically, what we're trying to do in the US now is to take the SSI as an example, and to try to say, would it make any sense for us to have a U.S. national version of this? And we changed something slightly. We call it a, a Research Software Sustainability Institute as opposed to, I think, scientific for SSI? So is it? No, no. Okay. All right. So we added research. Um, was our change. Um, and, and what we have now is, a, is a, again, it's a conceptualization activity, which is a planning activity. It is not an institute. It's a, it's a project to see if we could plan an institute and if this makes sense. Um, so there's a lot of us that are involved. Um, I think that I am the only one who's listed here that's here, with the exception of Neil, who's down in our advisory committee. Um, but you can see we're trying to cover a lot of the U.S. space. We're trying to cover different funding agencies, both private and public. Uh, we're trying to cover geographically where we are. Uh, we're trying to get people like uh, Daniel Crawford and uh, Nancy wilkins Steer who are running software institutes in the U.S. already. Um, and Neil, as, a, as an example of somebody that's doing something outside of the U.S. So, um, so we just we have a, a bunch of us that are looking at this and trying to figure out does this make sense? And the way that we're the, what we're basically trying to do then is to say, can we plan um, a U.S. research software sustainability institute? Can we go beyond resources that exist that are available to everybody like GitHub? Um, can we cut across all of the different activities that are funded by NSF and software and by other agencies? Um, ideally, we would like to directly and indirectly, positively impact all the software development and maintenance projects across all of NSF. Um, so it's a fairly large thing that we would like to do, and exactly how we do that with a limited number of people, limited budget, I think is 
is one of the challenges of planning to see if this actually, if we can do something that's useful or not in this area. Um, you know, focusing on the entire research software ecosystem, including the people that create, maintain, and use research software. So we see creating and maintaining potentially as fairly different, and then using certainly is different. Even though there are people that do all of these things, there often are different people that are doing these things. And so how we aim at those people and what we do is, is one of the questions. So what we would like to get out of this year-long process is an eager, supportive, and inclusive community, uh, a concrete institute plan that's configured to, to do things, um, and to have a published survey and some data that demonstrates a community need. So NSF has funded this. NSF is not committed to funding anything beyond this. Um, so we need to make a case that they should fund something beyond this, and that's really half of what we're trying to do. Um, the other thing is that from the point of view of the NSF-funded researchers, they're getting money now. If we get money for this institute, they're going to get less money. So they have to really be convinced that it's worth it to have some central software institute that's going to make it easier for them to do their jobs more than getting a little bit of extra money for them. Is. And that's one of the challenges we have is how to, again, how to make that case, how to make it in a way that they go to their program officers and NSF and say, we think this is a great idea that you should fund. And not they say, yeah, this is kind of interesting, but you should really keep giving us the money. Um, we're going to have, uh, we believe, five workshops. We have a first one that's going to be general discussion, community idea gathering that will be in Berkeley next month, uh, in about two and a half weeks, I guess. Um, and then three topical workshops that will be on specific ideas, and I don't know what those ideas will be yet because they're going to come out of this first workshop, hopefully. Um, then we will have a, a fifth workshop, which is trying, really just trying to wrap up and finalize a plan and deliver things to NSF. We will have a survey that will be hopefully very widely distributed. Um, and what we want to do is to learn about the software that's being produced and used and the way different people are contemplating sustaining it. Uh, we'll also have some ethnographic studies. So uh, Nick Weber from Washington is going to go off and sit with some different groups who are developing software and try to really understand what their problems are and how this institute then potentially could help them. Um, and we will have uh, some newsletters. We have a website now. We have a little bit of social media, but that should be building up hopefully in the near future. And the intent is that these workshops and the survey and the ethnographic studies all kind of start and then keep building on each other. And as we go through this, we learn more and more and we have a, a better and better plan that we come up with at the end. Um, we're really thinking about what we're looking at in three different areas. Um, in some sense, those are, these are first, um, if I go back to that diagram, which I actually haven't thought about doing, but I'm thinking about now. Um, the first one is functioning of the individual and team, which would basically be the, the people and community aspect to some extent. The second one is the functioning of the research software, which would have been the software that was down at the bottom of the diagram. And then the last one is the functioning of the research field itself, which wasn't on the diagram at all. Um, but it's basically kind of how do, we, how do we understand what we're doing and how do we improve what we're doing at a, at a very high level. Um, there's a, if you go to our website, which again is ursi.us, uh, our proposal is on the website and it's public, and you can see for each of these things five or six different kind of topics that we were thinking about that would fit into each of them. Um, but I didn't want to go through that in the 10 minutes that I'm overrunning already, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> huh? uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, I'll keep going. <laughs> um, no, really, this is the last slide. So, uh, so if you're interested in uh, in participating in this, even if you're not in the U.S., we still would welcome um, your, your interest. If you uh, tell us good things, we would be uh, potentially able to invite a few people from outside the U.S. to come to some of the other workshops. Uh, we have a couple of people coming to the first workshop, but we haven't really planned the others yet. And oh, Sorry, the other thing is that we're paying for everybody to come to all the workshops. I mean, this is on your own. This is all us. This is the money that we got from NSF. Um, so we're certainly open to having a few uh, non-U.S. people that have particular expertise, particular ideas that they want to contribute, that they think are, would be important for, for this activity to do. Um, so there's a mailing list that's on the bottom of the webpage. There's a, a Twitter account, which is si 2 ursi SI2 is the program, ursi is us again. Um, we will have a survey, we'll be releasing it, and if you're interested, we'd be happy for people to circulate it and to, and to take it and to help us with that. Um, and if you have questions or want to suggest something or volunteer, then please let us know. So that's the two things I wanted to talk about uh, and the relatively coarse picture that I wanted to show. Um, and again, I think this is, even though this isn't a lightning talk, this is really, I hope, somewhat informal and in the remaining time
time that I might have left for questions, I would be very happy either to get questions, but really even more to get suggestions and comments and feedback. So thank you.